Good morning and welcome to St. Michael's. Our opening hymn this morning is number 563, Lift Up Your Hearts. Please stand as we greet Father Todd and begin our celebration this morning.
Good morning. Good morning, Father. How are you today? My dear friends, we, we are blessed to be invited into God's presence on the first day of the week to come in with God, to ask his blessings, and to just feel the privilege of being called sons and daughters of the Most High. And so in this Mass, I'll be offering prayers for all of you praying for your families and praying for all those you carry every day in your heart. But I also like to offer this mass for our brothers and sisters who are battling fires in the Midwest. Some have lost lives, others have lost property, communities are decimated. We pray and ask that God may be with our firefighters who are working so hard, risking their own lives to protect others. We pray for those who have died that they may know rest. And for those who are grieving that they may know God's comfort. I'll invite you to also bring your intentions and let us offer prayers together to God. Let us begin this Mass in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves, dear friends, for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. For the times we have struggled to forgive others, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the times we have struggled to forgive ourselves, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For the times we have struggled to accept and receive forgiveness, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins. May he bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. of the world of mercy on us you take away the sins of the world receive our prayer you are seated at the right hand of the father of mercy on us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our hearts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, that the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside, remember death and decay, and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor, remember the most high's covenant, and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, no one else lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why died, Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times, Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he, he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I'll pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to report and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends, today I will be reflecting with you from the gospel reading. In fact, all the readings speak to um, one theme, which is forgiveness. And I was like, we should have had this reading last week and then had a reading for last week, this week, because in the process or the mechanism of forgiveness and reconciliation, Forgiveness comes first because I have to forgive you before I begin to reconcile with you. It, it, it doesn't go the other way. If I have not forgiven, I can reconcile. Forgiveness doesn't need the other person. I could do it all by myself. I could choose, make a choice. You know what? Yeah, I'm hurt by what you did, but I don't want to hold any grudge against you. And I will treat you as if nothing ever happened. That's all up to me. I could do that. That's all up to you. But if we have to reconcile and get our lives back and live together as we did prior to the event or whatever happened, I need you. We have to work together. It takes two to reconcile or it takes every member of the team to reconcile. But however, last week we talked about reconciliation and this week we're talking about forgiveness. And before I say anything I want to say, I want to lay this out there. I am not presuming that I know the hurt that you have experienced in your life, that I know how that impacted you, that I know how that changed you, that I know how that is still holding you back. We're all different. And we're all not given the same graces. And we all don't have the capacity to respond the same way. 
to the grace given us. So I understand all of that. And I'm sure that the Lord understands that too. That some have been hurt far more than others. And what, what happened to some is far more painful than what happened to us or to anyone else. So the Lord understands that, and I do too. So God is not trying to undermine that or trying to minimize your reason and your justification for being hurt and for finding or struggling with forgiveness. But he wants you to understand, as he wants me to understand, the importance of taking that route to forgive. Because the Lord wants you to have your best life. And he knows that your inability to forgive is holding you back from your best life. He wants you to have the blessings and the favors that he has in store for you. And he knows all the strings that are holding you back. And those strings do not come from the spirit of God. They come from the enemy. He's pulling them at every moment, just making sure he keeps you on that check. And the Lord is saying today, I need you to free yourself from all of that, just so you could begin a whole new life, a life of plenty and abundance. You hear from the gospel reading, I'm sure Peter, like most of us, may have been really, 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 really pissed with whoever was doing this to him. He came to Jesus as if looking for a justification to lash out on somebody. Maybe it was one of the two brothers. I'm not sure who it was. But he came and asked a question. Lord, how many times must I endure or tolerate someone before I lash out? Seven times because I'm sure he had done seven already. So he was saying, if you just give me permission after this, I will teach someone a lesson. And let someone know what it takes to hurt me again. And Jesus said, no, not seven times. It's 77 times. Now, I'm not going with numbers. I just want to talk about the whole, the entire concept of forgiving. Now, I'm sure everyone here does have a cell phone, and maybe a smartphone. And you know, smartphones, they all have capacities. Some you have with maybe 16 gigabytes of space that you can store stuff, whatever it is that you want. Some have 32. Some have 64. Others have 128. And maybe the newer ones have 515, whatever. Now, you also know that if you have 16 gigabyte of space, because like I said at the beginning, God did not all equip us the same way. Some have 16 gigabyte because he knows if they manage a 16 gigabyte very well, they can thrive in this life. Others have 64, depending on the circumstances of your life. Now, if you have 16, and maybe I have 16, and I allow all of this stuff to store themselves in my 16 GB, very soon, I'll realize that my device will begin to work slowly. If I try to open anything, it will spin and spin and spin and spin and spin. It's saying to me, listen, I am struggling. There's too much stuff here that is unnecessary. Free me to function the way the maker made me too. I can do a better job. I am just stuffed with nonsense inside here. And if you listen and go and check and realize, wow, I have all of these videos and all of this day that I don't need, and you begin to click delete, delete, delete. Very quickly, you fill the space, and the phone begins to work as though nothing ever happened. What is true with that phone is also true with you, and it's true with me. We do have a capacity, and sometimes we are overloaded with all you know, the resentment that we've carried across many years. Look, if you have the blessings of longevity, you will be upset and offended and hurt by many people in your life. And sometimes it begins from early on. If you read the book written by a very famous doctor, he talks about, he calls it, the body keeps the scores. That means your body does not forget. 
It keeps all of the, the records of all the experiences that happened to you from the moment you gained intellection. Your body keeps all of those scores and they impact you in some way unless you begin to process some of those and slowly delete them and free space, emotional space, just so you could deal with everything else the world is bringing to you. Not too many people can deal with the past and the present and the future and still be vibrant. Not very many, only very few can. And the Lord is saying to us, you cannot expect to have all of that stuff from the past flow into your present and sometimes even far into your future and still be able to have the best life that you deserve. And so today, he wants you to go back. Go back into your storeroom, into your emotional alley, and check. Have a whole overhaul of everything. Check and dust everything that is there. And it's all up to you. You have the power to do that. You could check and see what deserves to be in your mental dicks or your emotional dicks or your emotional storage capacity and what doesn't belong there. There are too many things that are no longer serving you well, too many hurts that are no longer serving you well. Says you take all of them out one by one. You don't need the other person to apologize to you. I don't need the other person to apologize to me, to come and tell me how sorry they were about what happened. I don't need that. <clears throat> Forgiveness is about, it's not about the other person. The Lord wants me to recognize. He wants you to recognize forgiveness is about you. That's something I want us to quickly go through right now. Now, forgiveness is more difficult for some than others because of how you frame forgiveness. If I frame forgiving you as though I am weak in relation to you, who wants to be weak? Who wants to feel weak? If I frame forgiveness as weakness, that means if I forgive you, then I'm caving, then I'm weak. I'm more likely not to forgive. I'm more likely to hold on to my anger or my resentment and keep it there because it justifies the fact that I am not weak. Forgiveness isn't about weakness because those who forgive are the real, powerful, strong people because it takes a strong man or strong woman of character to choose to forgive you even when you don't deserve it. If we think forgiveness is weak, then our God must be really, really weak because he forgives everyone. Sometimes, even undeservedly, he forgives us anyway because of his mercy. It takes a strong person, woman or man, to forgive. So never frame forgiveness as an act of weakness. It's an act of character. It's an act of integrity. It's an act of strength. Only the strong can do it. Now, if you also frame forgiveness as though me minimizing what happened to me. Yeah, what happened to me was serious. It changed my life. I'm still hurting. And I don't want to minimize it. And if I forgive him without him asking for forgiveness, maybe I'm making small of what happened to me or what he did to me. The violation was serious, was important, and I'm still upset. Now, when you forgive, it's not minimizing what happened to you. It's maximizing who you are. It's not minimizing anything that ever happened. It's maximizing the benefits and the blessings that that has for you. It's about you. It's about me. When we forgive, we are not saying that somehow the, 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 the past doesn't exist. We are not forgetting the past. No. What we're doing is we're not allowing the past to hold us back or to keep us down. We're freeing ourselves. We're freeing up space. Now, you know, if you have your faucet, for instance, when your faucet is blocked by stuff, sometimes it releases water. But it releases water, the pressure is always very slow. You need to call someone to come and clean the clutter just so you could get water freely, whether to your bathtub or to anywhere. Now, that's what is happening with you emotionally. You need something to go through that faucet and, clean, and, and just clean, the clean everything else that is stuffed in there just so you could get up in the morning or go to bed at night and have a very restful sleep and get up in the morning with a clear mind because no one and nothing is holding you back. Now, there are times where we don't recognize how the resentment we carry holds us back 
an impact on our lives. The Lord knows. And he knows that is, that is, that is something that is important for every life. So I'm going to say this to you. Forgiveness is a lot of things. Forgiveness is you saying to yourself, I want to be the captain of my own soul. I want to be the master of my own life. I want to be the one driving on this car. I want to be the, on the driver's seat, not the passenger's seat. You know how when you are driving, the passenger doesn't have the right of way. He doesn't decide for the driver. The driver does. Even if he doesn't like the way he's driving or she is driving, he has no, he has no answer. You want to be on the driver's seat of your life. And the Lord is saying, I need you on that driver's seat because no one can drive your emotions better than you. No one can man manage your soul better than you. And each time we hold on to resentment and fail to forgive, we're ceding our seat to someone else. We're ceding control of our life to someone else. We are allowing someone else dominate everything that happens to us. The Lord is saying to you, take back control and manage how you go to bed and manage how you sleep and manage how you function day in and day out. When you forgive, that's what you do to yourself. Forgiveness is the greatest gift I can give myself. It's the best gift you can give yourself. And God is saying, you could start today and begin the process of forgiveness. Yes, we may have it very, very badly. But no one would ever hurt me more than I hurt myself. No one would ever hurt you more than you hurt yourself when you refuse to forgive. Because that's double traumatizing of yourself even after the initial event. And God is saying, no one deserves that. Now, you know that iron, iron is one of the strongest metal on earth. Nothing can destroy iron except the rust that begins from the iron itself. Only rust that begins within the iron itself can destroy iron. That's, who, that's, that's, that's you, that's me. That's how resilient God made us. It's only what we allow from within ourselves that can damage and destroy us. And God is saying, you don't deserve that. You don't need that. You can begin to make sure you keep yourself as he intended for you. Now, when you want to forgive, recognize that forgiveness is your best method of self-care. Forgiveness is about, mental, about emotional care, not the physical. Yeah, I could take care of myself physically and do everything. But unless I learn to maintain and keep and take care of my mental health and my emotional health, I'm not going to go very, very far in spite of everything I do to take care of my body. So forgiveness is an act of self-care and of self-love. You're saying to yourself, you're declaring to yourself, I love myself far more and I care about myself far more than I resent and hate the person who hurt me. That's what you're saying when you forgive. That's what you're declaring when you forgive. You're saying to God, God, I am doing this because of you, not because of this person. If it's for this person, I will do what Peter was asking to do. But for you, I'm letting it go. And when you let go, you will see what God can do in your own life, beginning today. So I encourage you, dear friends, if you are struggling, your priests are here. We are all here for you. You don't deserve to stay in that place that you find yourself today with resentment and stored start up anger. Yes, it happened, but you don't have to stay that way. Now, there are three things I want you to take, take to heart before you leave today. First, that anger is like me drinking deadly poison. Unforgiveness is like me drinking deadly poison and hoping that my offender will die. He or she is not going to die. I will die. That's what unforgiveness is. It's like me taking deadly poison because I'm so angry and so mad at someone. I'm drinking deadly poison and I'm saying to myself, I'm going to drink this and she, she is going to die. No. And God says, no, I cannot do that to myself. You cannot and you should not do that to yourself. 
Unforgiveness. It's also like you hurting right now. And you're going to bleed. Believe it or not. You're going to bleed. I'm going to bleed. But I'm going to bleed on someone who did not hurt me. Think about the last time they hurt in your office. Maybe by your commander or by your, your first, first sergeant or anyone else. Or your superior. And you carried all of that back home. And your kid, when you arrived, daddy, 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 your mommy, mommy, mommy. And because you were still carrying all of that pain, you did not have the time to pay attention to your child. And the child went back to her room feeling rejected. That's you carrying resentment and bringing it back and bleeding on someone who did not cut you, who did not hurt you. They don't deserve that. But because you're carrying all of this, you're passing it over to people who have never hurt you, who deserve your love, your care, and your attention. And God is saying, no, you can't do that to anyone. No one deserves that. You can take care of that. Nelson Mandela, after 27 years of jail, was asked, how did you get over all of the resentment you felt for all the injustice that you experienced? He said, I got tired of staying in that jail. And I said, no, I need to free myself. Nelson Mandela called resentment and unforgiveness a jail, a personal imposed jail. He says, I got tired of spending time in that jail. And I said, I need to free myself. And I hope, dear friends, that we will free ourselves of the resentment and the un unforgiveness that we carry in our heart. You can begin today and ask God grace. God, give me grace. I need your help to do this, to free myself. And I pray, dear friends, that as we find enough grace to do this, we may see the benefits and the blessings that God has in store for us. As always, I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are still the delight of God Almighty, that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you. Let us rise and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was he incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the one. Lord, giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gracious God, we come to you. We come to you unworthy. We come to you undeserving. But we come to you because we need you. We ask that as we open our hearts to you, we may feel the power of your grace, forgiving us and giving us grace to forgive ourselves, even as we pray for all our other needs. For the church, may the Lord bless her and keep her safe from all evil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the harmony and justice in our nation and across the world. May the Prince of Peace dwell in the hearts of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are holding into the past hurts and grievances, may the Lord give them the grace to forgive. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this family of faith, may the Lord fill us with love and truth and guide us in the ways of wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those chosen to take up their cross in union with Christ as a priest or in the consecrated life that others might have eternal life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they know the loving embrace of our merciful Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Let us enlist our blessed mother's help as we invite her to pray with us and for us, saying, Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercies, our lives, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn that most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O Clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Amen. Please sit. Our offertory hymn this morning is number 551, God of Might and God of Mercy. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands, and in prayer and glory of His name, for our good and good and His holy church. Amen. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness, accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your glory may serve the salvation of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For though the human race is divided, by dissension and discord. Yet, we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation and forgiveness. Even more, by your spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again. Adversaries join hands and peoples seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about the Lord that hatred is overcome by love. Revenge gives way to forgiveness and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth and without end we are claimed.
You therefore, O Lord, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is a word that brings salvation. The hand you extend to sinners and the way by which your peace is offered to us. We, when we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ brought for us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by, outpour, by the outpouring of your spirit, that they may become for us the body and blood of your son, at whose command we fulfill these mysteries. For when, out, for when about to give his own life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread in his own hands, gave thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of your death and resurrection, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with your very Spirit, who takes away everything that then estranges us and keeps us apart from each other. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Let us rise and pray together as family in the words our Lord left us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The, the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. Amen. Dear friends, let us wave to each other the sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus, our bread of life, our forgiveness and reconciliation with the Father and with each other. He takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. But on the same word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O oh Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effect and not our own desires may always prevail in us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please sit for a few announcements. We have a few announcements this, this, this morning. Pat, you have two. Go ahead first. Um, I am the, my name is Pat Wadlington. I am the BMIS coordinator for the um, Catholic Parish, Catholic, Cord Catholic community here at Fort Drum. And what this is all about is recording the hours that all of us spend volunteering to support this community because we wouldn't be able to do what we do without volunteers. And the, the Army Command needs to know how many hours are put in by volunteers, by non-paid volunteers. So please go on myarmyonesource.com, register if you haven't already, change your location if you were registered in a previous location, and start logging your hours in. And also, I have a different topic, one volunteer position that is like a behind the scenes type. If, you, if you're not one that can get up in the front of the, of the church um, during mass, and it's a behind the scenes type uh, thing, but very, very important, it's the altar linen care ministry. Um, we have to purify, wash, dry, and iron the purificators and the other altar linens that the priests use in the, sac in the sacrament of, um, in the sacraments. So if anyone is interested in doing that, please see me and I will let you know what that entails and um, get started on doing some of that because right now I'm the, one that, the only one that's doing it. And it's very, very, very difficult to keep up with. Thanks, Pat. So, Bemis, that's where we uh, put our hours in the volunteer. We need volunteers in this parish. Father's already talked about it. So, uh, as things start to open up, let's step up to the plate and volunteer a little bit, okay? Um, and we need help with altar linens. So, if you could do that, we would appreciate it. Also, after the service, we need two volunteers to count the collection. They need to be 18 years or older, not from the same family. If you see our soldiers back there, we'll go walk you through how to do it. If you have a missalette, when you're done with it, put it on the table under the clock so the soldiers can sanitize that and put it back in the rack for the next services. And our final hymn when we get to it is number 467, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. And I believe Richard has a few things to say. Deacon Richard. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Well, I want to congratulate all the mothers here since last year, since last May, there's a lot of new additions here. Congratulations on all the babies, the newborn babies here. It's fantastic. Keeps you young, I know. I'm a parent of eight children and 15 grandchildren, and I hope to have a lot more grandchildren. <laughs> That's guaranteed now. Like Joe and Pat was saying about volunteers, there is a sign-up sheet back there on a cart there, and it has sign up for volunteers. It does not just deal with religious education or AIDS. It has on the top all the different things that we need, and like sacristans and taking care of the altar linen and stuff is very, very important. Yesterday, Father and I put the green linen on the uh, altar here, and the the white linen was all stained and stuff. So it's very, very important because it is a tedious job and hard job, but it's behind the scenes. But remember, Jesus, that's the one he watches close and it stays with you a lot closer. I made that up. Uh, first of all, I just have a few announcements. Uh, Wednesday, September 16th, we are having our first adult uh, get-together here and uh, like I said two weeks ago, it's a DVD presentation about uh, a radical who proposed different ways and organized that how to organize a revolution. And it's taking place today in the United States as you just look around. It's well organized and there's somebody behind it. 
This means uh, Saul Alinsky uh, was a philosopher, a theorist, and he wrote the different steps. But back in the 1960s, there were a number of people within the church hierarchy that were very influenced by this theory and philosophy. And when Vatican II came around, they jumped at the chance, basically, to try to change our faith. And after Vatican II, they took over for, for a little while. And they brought about a lot of hardship to a lot of us. I was just in high school when that, all that started, so it didn't mean anything to me. All I know, I went to Mass, and there's a guitar player up there singing Kumbaya. I never heard of a Kumbaya before, but that's what new songs we were singing, and I had no idea. But sacred music has come back. So Wednesday, we're having that presentation and a good discussion on that, and probably talk about Vatican II, because I know a lot of young people are asking about it. So there's a sign-up sheet for it, because we are limited to about 15 people because of COVID. So that's back there. Also, it starts at 6 o'clock with a grab bag like a meal. Before we used to come in, the food would be there, and you all sit down and socialize and talk. No, it's today, or this Wednesday, you come in, it'll be in a bag, you grab it, and you go to your classroom. Okay, we are, have our classes in 204, right out here. RE, Religious Ed, starts September 27th. Uh, registration needs to be done quickly as possible by, this, by, this ne by next Sunday, so we have an accurate number of students that are attending the classes. We do have enough teachers. We have a good group of volunteers this year. It's amazing. I had a great group last year, and, and <laughs> they're in among that first group I talked about having babies. Uh, so we had to get a whole new group this year. It's fantastic how two couples and the, and the women come forward and uh, to help out teach your children. The theme of the year I'm trying to have the teachers and you get involved in this is called the domestic church. It's the church in your home. It's developing the church in your home. A lot of you probably already do it. St. Michael's, my position, I'm in charge of just basically 45 minutes to an hour with your children, presenting them the information of the Catholic Church. That's not all that really has to be done. A lot more. Catholicism is our life, is our religion. It's not separation of church and state within your family. Within the domestic church, it's, in, it's your life. And your child should be brought up that way to love Christ. And Christ gave us this church with the guidance of the Holy Spirit to help you do that. Father and myself and the teachers, we're just vehicles to present. You're the ones that really have to talk to your kids and be with your kids and live the life of a Catholic Christian. So please register to your child. Now, if you're concerned about COVID, we are going to you know, go through and how we can walk out of here and stuff like that uh, next Sunday probably or the Sunday afterwards. But if you do not want your child to attend class, the program I got this year has activities and a book that parents can do. It's a parent-based type of religion class is meant for the parents to work with the child at home. I'm, I'm even going to have your child and you families have a class when we have Danza weekends. Because we have one time, we have like three weeks off. I think it's good for us not to take off our faith for three weeks. So there will be work. I shouldn't say work. There will be sharing and talking with your children about faith in God and Jesus, Mary and the Holy Family, talking to them about that is a pure gift of God to you. Finally, I have always found, I wish I did it, my wife did it, talking to your child when they're very young 
about your religion, about God, about the guardian angels, about all this that we have that's beautiful. We have a beautiful faith in our traditions. Letting your child know about this brings them closer. But I find that bedtime is an important time. You have your night prayers and you just sit there with your child talking about God or whatever they want to talk about. Because I found out my wife, we have my youngest child is 32, my oldest is 51. They still come and talk to her, not at bedtime, but they talk to her and they still open up all through high school that was there. So it's very important that you always keep that communication with your child because there's a lot of trials and tribulations on there. So I know I came up here for a short time. You're probably ready for lunch, probably. Well, thank you, and God bless. So we just have to listen for a few more minutes. Good morning. My name is Stephanie Litz, and I'm serving this year as the Vice President of Catholic Women of the Chapel. And this Thursday, September 17th, we'll be having our fall kickoff meeting here at the chapel starting at 930. There is limited child care available due to COVID restrictions. So if you're interested in attending and you have young children, please see me after mass. Uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Good morning. So sorry for all the announcements, but things are picking right back up and we want to give you guys the most updated information. Um, so to recap, we do need volunteers. As Pat mentioned, um, you can sign up for VEMAS. The steps is in the bulletin that is printed out every week and passed out um, before Mass. Um, if you're not picking this up, these are also emailed out to you. And this is also posted on our Facebook group page. Um, youth group is starting September 27. There has been a change on the time. Um, now it's at 1630 at room 215. If you want to sign up your youth, um, please email Jessie Hanlon. Her email can be found again on the bulletin that is printed out for you every week, also emailed out to you. And if you are not getting these emails and you would like to, please let me know so we can add you in our distribution list. And last but not least, um, we are still updating our parish registry for this month, so expect a call or an email from me or both. And I do appreciate you taking the time to answer that email or answer that phone call. Um, and it's also been brought to my attention that one of our volunteers, um, Russell and Andrew Maluka, it's their last um, weekend here. Uh, if you would like to see me and Deacon Richard, we have a certificate for you um, just thanking you for the volunteer that you guys have done for um, st. Michael's this past few months thank you before the final blessing I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for being here today and thanks to your families for joining in worshiping I um, mean this beautiful community um, I'd like to express my thanks to our altar service who always do an outstanding job we're very grateful to you. Thank you very much. Thank you to our music team, our lectors, our ushers, our Eucharistic ministers, and of course, those who count our collection, those who would volunteer to count our collection. We appreciate everything you do here. This is a volunteer community, so we appreciate whatever you are willing and able to, to commit you know, in making our community um, more vibrant and more serviceable. Is there someone here who, for whom today will be their last day, or their last Sunday, or their last week in our church? Someone here who is new, for whom today is the first day, or this Sunday is the first week here in our church? First Sunday or last Sunday? Last Sunday. All right, we're going to say a blessing for you and your family. Please, if you can, just stretch forth your hands behind and let us say a blessing to most gracious God. You bring us and form families in different ways. We thank you for this member of family that you gave us as a member of St. Michael's family. As a prepared dear God to leave us, we ask that your blessings may go with them. 
that your angels may watch over them, and your graces may sustain them in everything they do. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Anyone with a birthday or an anniversary that you celebrate this week? Birthday? I think so. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear brother. Happy birthday to you. All right. Um, there's one thing I want you to do, please. Today is the 13th of September, 2020. I hope that by December 24th, 2020, you might have at least identified one person that you intend to bring to Jesus as his birthday gift. Someone who is currently not worshiping in our church, that you know should belong here and is not here that you are going to identify at least, it could be 10 people, but at least one person, saying you're committing yourself, begin to pray today for that person. Pray for them for two weeks, for one week, for one month, for whatever. And then finally, go speak to them and invite them. There is no gift you can give to someone on Christmas Day better than the gift of faith, the gift of Jesus Christ. Because everything else you give to them has temporal value. When you give them the gift of faith, it follows them to the other side. I beg you, please, identify at least one person you want to bring to God. So always remember, you are the delight of God Almighty. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sins of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. For the prayers of St. Michael the Archangel and our blessed mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Have a blessed week. Thank you, Father. Thank you.